Well, we finally made it to Morbius. The Morbius Review. So it's about a doctor named Michael Morbius. He has a rare blood disease since he was a child. And his vow is to find a cure for this rare blood disease. And he is trying to mix his DNA with vampire bats. He believes that bats and humans might share some kind of blood type connection. He also has a brother named Lucian Crown. He also calls him Milo. He also has the same blood disease, and this serves as motivation for Michael Morbius. So he gets older, becomes a doctor, scientist, and he's been testing different types of blood types. And while he has been able to create artificial blood, which has helped a lot of other people, he just couldn't find the right type of blood to cure his disease. Artificial blood is more of a treatment but not really a complete cure. That's basically what this movie is about, the origin of Morbius. When Michael Morbius does discover the connection, he tests the experiment on himself. And things don't go as expected. He turns into a vampire who is uncontrollable, flies around the city, scratches and claws people. He also has to fight a war on two fronts. The feds are after him because he killed eight people on the boat. They want to know who this Michael Morbius guy is. He also has to worry about his friend, Milo. Milo discovers Morbius' experiments and he steals the serum he tested it on himself. He becomes super villain uh, Hunger. He's there to cause rampage across New York City. So Morbius he has to stop his brother and stop the feds. That's basically the story of the movie. As far as my thoughts on Morbius, I like the performances of Matt Smith and Jared Leto. I thought they were alright. The action, you know, the Morbius scenes where he's flying around the city, scratching and clawing people, I thought they were pretty good. I mean, this Morbius guy is a vampire. You see what he looks like. They slow down what he's doing so you can see the full effects. So I thought that stuff was pretty good. The backstories of Milo and Morbius I thought were pretty good as well. They do a backstory when they were younger. You can see how their younger selves interacted and how it set them on the past where they're at today. Michael Morbius, which was a smart kid, was able to fix a heart monitoring machine with a pin, and it took a bunch of scientists to invent that machine. He was able to fix it with a pin. So he's smart, so he becomes a Nobel Prize scientist. Unlike Milo, he was sick as a kid, and he can never accomplish what Morbius has done. He went to law school but dropped out. So I like some of that stuff as well. Tyrese Gibson's in the movie. I like Tyrese. So I, was, so I thought it was alright as well. I like Tyrese. One of my favorite actors. The Transformers series. I think Fast and Furious. So they got Tyrese, in this, Tyrese Gibson in this movie. And that's big. Michael Keaton also makes a five-year-long return to the Marvel franchise. He's back as Adrian Toomes. So I thought that was all right. So there are a few things about this movie that I did find enjoyable. Now, the things that I didn't quite like. One, the film was cut for time. This movie is an hour and 45 minutes. You can tell this movie made several trips to the editing room. If you watch the trailer, 
the trailer makes all these connections to Spider-Man, they disappear in this film. It's also a Venom joke in the trailer. In the trailer, Morbius says, My name is Venom. Just kidding. Michael Morbius at your service. Well, in this movie, they just leave the My Name is Venom part in, in a Michael Morbius uh, at your service part out. They cut that part out. That was supposed to be some kind of joke, you know, make the audience laugh at it, but they cut it out, so I was very confused by that. This Morbius, no Venom, is Venom in this universe. Where's Morbius Venom all along? I don't know, they do reference Venom. Venom the movie in this movie. They talk about like San Francisco, and that's where Venom was at. So that was a bit confusing. Also, the also cut out parts of the movie where Milo and Morbius become enemies. The first half of this movie, they're friends. Then a dramatic shift occurs where they're enemies. There's no climax of why those two hate each other. They have a brief argument. That's about it. As far as Milo becoming hungry, you never really see him still. Morbs' serum. You just kind of have to imply it, even though they did bring it up later in the movie. We never saw him take the serum. So I was very confused how he became a vampire. But yeah. Movie's cut for time. Another issue they have this movie. It needed to be more global. I like the performances of Matt Smith and Jared Leto, but I thought it focused a little bit too more, a little bit too much on Morbius. I wish they could have focused more on Tyrese Gibson and the feds. I mean, if you're going to create artificial blood that can cure bloodborne illnesses, well, that's another part about the movie. I like going the whole medical route, explaining the dangers of the bloodborne illnesses, stuff like that. I mean, Blood transfusions are hard. People had different types of blood. So it's very hard to do that. Back to what I was saying. If you're going to create artificial blood to cure bloodborne illnesses, you think the feds would be all over that. In this movie, you only had two cops chasing Morbius. You'd think there would be a lot more. The, fish, the, film, the film was a little more global. focused more on the feds and the effects of artificial blood. And what are the ramifications of Morbius killing the eight people on the boat? They kind of completely ignored that plot. Everybody got killed in this movie. They felt like a statistic rather than just a death that should be thoroughly investigated. And the third issue I had this movie, it was delayed. This movie was supposed to come out in 2020. It came out in 2022. The fact that it took two years for this movie to come to theaters, just mind-boggling. Yeah, the whole the whole pandemic that probably had to do something with it, but it became the new New Mutants. That movie was delayed for two years. By the time the movie came out of the theaters, people just didn't care. When you delay something for a long period of time, people don't care. I think that's what happened with this movie. People just lost interest. So we had Spider-Man, and we're on a high from that movie. We got Doctor Strange. We just saw the Batman. We're getting ready for Top Gun. Now we got Morbius. I think people just forgot about this movie. And that shows why it failed the box office. Now the critics didn't like this movie. And I knew they wouldn't like this movie. That's why they delayed it from January to April. Because they want to make bank at the box office in January. With Spider-Man still in theaters. I knew the critics would not like this movie. I just had a feeling. So my thoughts on Morbius, I thought it was good for what it was. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I won't necessarily recommend it to people unless you want to follow the Marvel Universe and the lore or explore the Sony Spider-Man Universe. You know, it's just another movie to see at the theater, another movie to add to the collection. Now my thoughts on the post credit scene that they had. They, they had. They had Michael Keaton and Adrian Toomes show up in... In the uh, Manhattan County Jail. He's in jail somewhere. And they're going to release him because they don't know how he got there. Keaton, or Adrian Toomes, he, he, he was, he's in the MCU. 
So they transport him over to the Sony Spider-Man universe. And he is there. He sets up a meeting with Morbius. They would have formed the Sinister Six. Now, I thought this was a little bit interesting. Because they've been... The Sinister Six movie has been rumored for years. They almost started production before it got cancelled. This movie's been in the making for eight years, and I think a Sinister Six movie is pretty interesting. But the issue with the post credit scene is that it contradicts Spider-Man No Way Home. In that movie, Doctor Strange casts a spell that everybody would forget who um, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. They forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and Parker didn't want that, so he changed the spell. And the spell became whoever who knows Peter Parker came into the MCU. So everybody from the, the Garfield universe and the McGuire universe, they all came over into the MCU. What's contradicting about this one is that Adrian Toomes was already in the MCU. So why did he come over to the Sony Spider-Man universe if the Peter Parker he knew was also in the MCU? should have stayed put. So that was a bit confusing. The only thing that would make sense is if there's a Peter Parker in the Morbius universe that he knows. So if Andrew Garfield is going to return as Spider-Man, this post credit scene might make sense. Maybe he knows Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. I don't know. But if Garfield does not return, it's somebody else. Or if it's Spider-Woman or Miles Morales, then this post credit scene really doesn't make any sense. I like the setup for Sinister Six, but as far as playing off the events of No Way Home, that's where it kind of misses. But Morbius, I like it. 8 out of 10. Go watch it. Go check it out. You might like it, might not. This is your Morbius review.